Uh, but this is Jim Hall. Again, he's the founder uh, of House of Prayer uh, Edmonton. And so, man, we're, it's, let, I'm excited for him to be here with us today. Um, and so maybe just share a little bit, uh, Jim, about you, as well as on House of Prayer, what it is, how it started, and what you guys do. Well, this is good. Uh, it's a totally new experience for me, as well as I think for many of you. And just, uh, I've, I've actually never done church with sunglasses on before, so that's... <laughs> This is cool. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, no, House of Prayer. So we, well, we, we started actually way back in 2003. And uh, really as, as a ministry uh, that uh, wanted to facilitate corporate gatherings of prayer in the city, for the city, for the province. Uh, we wanted to see it be uh, cross-denominational, multi-church. Like, so people from different, uh, different congregations and different streams and backgrounds uh, in the body of Christ, we wanted to be able to pray together uh, and just uh, and, and to facilitate that over the city on a regular basis. And so, uh, you know, we started out back, at, actually originally in, in 2003, we started doing a monthly time of 24-hour prayer, uh, which we still do uh, to this day. And so we, we, we started that, and we, that was kind of the grace, that was the level of, of, of grace that, that the Lord was giving to us in those days. And so we actually did that for five straight years. We just did once a month, uh, and we moved around to a couple of, a couple of locations. And, and I, th I think I've said this before. Uh, well, I have said it in different places. But uh, to me, one of the greatest miracles of, of God's grace to us in, at House of Prayers is that we, during those years, we just didn't give up. Uh, you know, we, kept, we wanted to, you know, it was just some, some challenging times, but we just kept going with the, with the 24 hours. And then, and then in 2008, uh, the Lord shifted things and opened it up for us to begin to meet on a weekly basis. And so we'd do the 24 hours, but then every other Friday uh, we, would, we would meet. And then in 2009, that's, uh, 2009 was when I started uh, doing House of Prayer in a full-time vocational way. And so that's, uh, that's what I'm still doing. Uh, all these years later, and then, it, and then, kind of in 2013 is roughly when we actually started meeting here at Victory Church, and uh, so it, it's been fantastic. And really, our, our heart is to is to call people together for prayer and to to do it on a daily basis. Uh, and so, like, again, we've just been able to do that, and we see different people from different backgrounds uh, that are able to come. Uh, and pray, and we just lift up the name of Jesus and, and pray to him. And so it's a little bit who we are. Yeah, that's amazing. I know, I think some of you probably know House of Prayer, but yeah, they've been meeting in our building since you said 2013, um, which is just so beautiful that we get to partner together with local uh, churches, local ministries, and celebrate Jesus together. So yeah, we're so excited just to have, you know, Jim even just be a part of our building. But I guess the next question I have for you is how would you describe prayer? Um, and maybe let's do that in like two sentences. Like, what is prayer? And this can be even in a personal way. It might not be like a broad way, but just even for you, what is prayer for you? Well, I would, uh, I would, I would express it this way. I, I actually, I like this. This I'm going to use a quotation just to, to uh, and then I'll ex explain it. Prayer is a continuing is a continuing conversation that God has started, which eventually becomes a full encounter with Him. Okay, so I just, I love that. That's my okay, sentence. Yeah. That's so amazing. prayer is, is continuing a conversation that God has started. Yeah. So first of all, it's a conversation. Uh, it's something that God has started and that we get to join in with, with him and begin and to have that conversation with him. But it's also about encountering God, knowing God yeah. and, and, and experiencing him. And so that to me is, is a lot of times, you know, we, we don't think of it that way. We think of prayer as, as, uh, as something, you know, like just something that we're sta stating, uh, so we're just speaking to God. But it, the conversation piece is, is that God is also speaking to us, and we actually get to have an experience with him in that. So. Can you say that quote one more time? Because that was so good. Yeah. Let's hear uh, it. it. Prayer is continuing a conversation that God has started, uh, which eventually becomes a full encounter with him. Yeah, that is so good. Yeah, I think it's just so important. Yeah, like the conversation yeah, that he started and then we get to encounter him through it, which is just so beautiful that we get to actually encounter our Savior, get to encounter our Creator, our God. And, you know, I think it's just so beautiful um, for that. And another thing, I guess, like when we continue this conversation, I know for you, obviously, prayer has become a big part of your life. 
You know, you've, you've committed to it full time since, when you say, 2009? Yeah. So 12 years. And how have you made prayer like a daily practice in your life? So I know for a lot of us, you know, first of all, sometimes it's just finding time. You know, maybe we have young kids or whatever it is. So how have you practically made prayer a daily practice for yourself? Yeah, well, I, I think for me, uh, the way that I've, I've found it uh, best to, to do it is, is that I, I kind of be, I believe that, that, well, first of all, I, I, didn't, I never used to be a kind of a morning person. I wouldn't right. say that I'm a morning person. <laughs> I used to kind of chafe against morning people. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, so it's not necessarily like, but at the beginning of your day, so whether that, like, for some people, the beginning of their day is like 6 in the morning. Right. Uh, others, it's maybe later, but at some point your day begins. And so, uh, so I, I believe actually that when we start our day, whenever that is, we start our day, we have a series, we just, by nature, every single one of us has a ritual, that uh, like a series of rituals. And what I mean by that is not something magical or anything like that, but you wake up, typically you wake up and you do the same things pretty much in the same order. And, you know, and what I've found the best practical way is that I incorporate prayer into that series uh, of rituals. So, like, not because people should do what I do at all, but because uh, just by way of practical example. So, I'll wake up, I'll put the, I, I put the kettle on, uh, I go have a shower, I come back, I make a cup of tea, and then I go downstairs, I've got a room downstairs in my house, and... And I, and I spend a, a period of time with God in, in, in prayer. And so that to me is like that. It's just, it's become a ritual. So it's just, it's the same. It's pretty much the same thing almost every day. I, I did it today. And so I, I find, first of all, that that's been really helpful for me. Um, you know, just, just one of the things uh, that really helped me, I just, this is by way of uh, sort of a parenthesis, is like when, when our kids, I got two, I got two children, they're, they're not so little anymore. They're 18 and 21. And, uh, but when they were little, uh, I learned real fast that the best way, it was really important and healthy for me to, to get up before them. And so that's actually how I transitioned to being, <laughs> getting up a little bit earlier. Uh, but getting up before them and just kind of quieting, just having that just some time by myself. And, that, and then it just made my whole day better. And so that's kind of how the ritual thing started for me. And, and one of, the, other, the other thing is that I just, just real, I'm going to come back to this probably in, in, in another question or so, but I just, I have a plan. So I, I, so I have a scheduled, to, I have a, a time in, that's part of my morning kind of routine. If you don't like the word ritual, just say routine. Uh, then, I've, then I have a plan and I just, I've got it. And so whether or not I feel super inspired or whether I feel kind of dull and hardly awake, uh, then I can, I just go into it. And so those two things have been really helpful. I just incorporate it into my routine and, and you could do that at a different part of your day. Like some people might want to do it at, at the end of their day and, uh, and want to, but having your routine and then having a plan are the two things that have really helped me. You think one thing you also said is that you have a room. So like how important do you think it is to have like a space in your home or in your car or whatever that is to have for prayer? I think that I think that is it, it is helpful to have something that is uh, not terribly distracting, right. and so like it's it's good if you can find. I think the main thing is 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 being somewhere where you you can minimize as much as possible the distractions uh, that inevitably come, especially for for those of us that have families and kids and stuff like that. That can be chaotic, uh, you know. Like sometimes you might. I guess you could even hole away in the bathroom if you needed to or something like that. But. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that's so good. And one thing you kind of just touched on is, is, you know, sometimes you don't feel super inspired. So what, how do you navigate seasons where maybe you just are so dry in prayer, where you go pray, you just don't feel inspired, you don't feel even excited even yeah. for prayer? Like how do you navigate through those? Yeah, that is um, the, uh, the number one thing that I would say about navigating kind of dryness in prayer is, is this. The best piece of advice, the best thing I can say about it is just expect it. Just expect it. It's normal. You're not a failure. And you just sort of, and, and so just knowing those things, because a lot of times if you don't, if you don't have that, then you're like, oh no, I've screwed up. I'm, you know, I've quenched the spirit, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then you get weird and, and everything like that. But I just, I expect it. But 
honestly, just just showing up. So I, I like to think about it in terms of 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 a routine, uh, like just the not the routine, but uh, some of you, hopefully, hopefully many of you have some kind of uh, like exercise in your life. Like, I mean, physical exercise, you know, whether it's, you know, going to the gym or whether it's going for a walk. Um, the biggest thing is just showing up. Uh, like a lot of times, so my son for years was uh, a competitive swimmer. And so that's a little bit on the intense side, but my wife loves swimming too. And uh, a lot of times she, what she would, she would say, she needed to go to, she, she'd plan to go swimming uh, or just insert whatever. She was planning on going swimming, and she was like, I just, I absolutely don't feel like it. I don't want to do this. I just would rather sit at home and just stay at home. I don't want to, and everything. And so she, she, she and I developed this thing where we just sort of said, all you got to do is just get in the car. That's all you got to do. You just get in the car and start driving to the, driving there, and everything. And you just, you just so what I mean by that is just, just show up and, and just just start there. Sort of like, oh man, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel God. I feel, or, you know, you could even just say, like, here's the reality. Lots of times it's not even just dryness. I feel irritated. I'm mad. I just had an argument with my kids, whatever it is, and, and stuff. And now I got to go and pray. Like, that's real. I'm just going to say it right up. That's, that's tough when you, when prayer's your job. And, and, you know, you have those inevitable kind of things where you have a disagreement with somebody and then you got to go and go to a prayer meeting. That, that's, that's a challenge. But just like showing up and just having that thing and just so that, to me, that's, that's actually really. And then the other thing that I've said, I've, I'm going to come back to this over and over again. It's just like I have a plan. So when I'm dry and I don't feel like praying, I just know what I'm going to do. I don't, I don't have to sort of sit there and, like, a lot of times, like, if we wait until we feel the anointing, like, I'm all for the anointing, but if we just, if a lot of times in normal life, if we only wait until we feel, like, the, the deep presence of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to have a very deep prayer life. You're just not going to have a consistent prayer life. And, and when it, but the thing is, is that if you show up and you consistently do that in short increments, guess what? you will feel more, you will encounter more, you will experience God more, you'll hear more. It, that just, the whole water level of your prayer life just goes up, but you have to do it by just consistently showing up. Uh, it's honestly, honestly, it is like working out. Whatever your, whatever your thing is for working out, you just, you got to think about your spiritual life that way. And I, I actually found a lot of benefit to thinking about my spiritual life, my, my inner life, uh, in, in paralleling it to, you know, like exercise or working out or training or something like that, uh, you know, so there you go. Yeah, I think it's so interesting. You look at like prayer as like a muscle, right? If we don't, we're not working that muscle, we're not going to grow it. And I think if we want to, you know, if we want to grow in prayer, I think the best thing to do is to pray, you know, and actually, even though you might, again, like you said, you might not feel inspired, you might not even know what to pray um, and things like that. So yeah, I think that's so important for us to, yeah, just continue to pursue it. Um, I think another question, you say you have a plan. So how do you even go about like creating a plan? So today I'm saying, hey, I don't pray and I want to pray more. How, how would you start with creating a plan for prayer? Um, yeah, well, just I'll, I'll preface that by preface my answer by saying um, what you want to do when you're starting out is the same thing that you would do if you're trying to, you know, begin to exercise. Start small and be consistent. You know, like if I want to, if I want to start doing push-ups, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, maybe do a hundred push-ups, like, because otherwise you won't be able to move the next day. So you kind of, you know, maybe, maybe start with like five, you know, kind of thing. And there's the same thing, the same thing with your interior life, your prayer life, uh, in terms of like, you know, having a, having a bit of a structure, uh, like what I do is or what you can do is, is I have, I'll start with like, uh, just a, like if I'll, I'll start with a few moments of quiet. Like I just quiet myself. Like I go down into the room, I sit and I just sort of, I just sit alone and be quiet for, for a few minutes. And then what I'll, you know, I'm not talking extended times. I'm just trying to, you're trying to like still your, like just quiet down. A lot of times in our busy life, we just quiet. So I'd start by quieting down. Then I start by by, I by open up the scriptures, yeah. and I look to the I look often to the Psalms. There's a ton of like uh, 
there's a ton of stuff online in terms of like having a schedule uh, of Bible readings and stuff. And I don't mean extended like half hour Bible readings and stuff like that, but just like starting out with the, you know, like how to read through the Psalms and, you know, whatever and stuff. So like literally today, so I got, I have a little booklet that I follow. I literally went downstairs. I literally, I sat, I took a sip of my tea. I just quieted myself. Then I looked at my booklet and it said, you know, the scripture verse that I went to, I read that, thought about it. What I do next after that is, is I have a little journal book that's, you know, kind of a little thing like this and, and stuff. I have some things that I write in it just real consistently. So, I mean, again, I'm not trying to promote what I do at all. I'm, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in giving an example. So, like, for me, what I'll do is I read the Bible, then I have a series of things. Number one, two things from yesterday that I'm thankful for. Uh, two things for today that I'm looking forward to. Coming here was one of them. Yes. And so two things that I'm looking forward to in the day. Uh, uh, one thing that, I, that stood out to me in the Bible reading that I, that I read. And then what I do personally is I just write out a prayer. I just, I just write a prayer to God uh, just in, you know, with a pencil or a pen. And, and, I, and I write that down. And that's, that's how I do it. And that's, and that's the, that's the extent of it. That's what, that's how I start pretty much every day. Yeah. And I, th- I think you yeah, having a plan's huge. And I think there's so many things you can do. I know a lot of people, they do something called soaps. You may have heard of soaps, which basically you have a scripture for the day. You have an observation of it, what you see in it. Um, and then you, how are you going to apply that? And then you have a prayer that you actually write everything out. Yeah. I think writing it out is good too, because it actually gets your mind and your hands and you're visually, yeah. you're seeing all of it kind of happen together. So I just encourage you, you know, find, find a way for you. Like what's a plan that you can make for your life. And again, you know, I, mean, I don't know how many times I've gone to the gym being like, man, after like a six month break being like, I'm still so strong. And then I go to the gym and then I get home the next day and I complain to Beth for about a week about how I can't walk. I can't move my arms. And yeah, I think starting small is so important. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so whatever that looks like for you, find something for you, find a time of day that you can say, okay, I'm going to dedicate, even if to this day it's five minutes or 10 minutes or however long it can be, dedicate that space and just create a time just yeah. quiet and to listen and to read the scriptures and then just to pray kind of what's on your heart. And I love that being thankful too, uh, mm-hmm. being thankful for what's happened, being excited for what's going to come and then praying for kind of the, the needs that you have. Yeah. So let's say somebody's here today and they've never prayed before. They've never one time been like, hey, this is my prayer. How would you encourage them to start praying? Like what would you do? This is my first time ever praying. Well, I would, I would just actually take an, in, I would just think about like who you are and what you're, Honestly, what your routine is. So you got to figure out when you're going to try and do it. Because you just want to, you don't want to just go home and, and, and say, uh, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, ex- I'm inspired tomorrow and I'm all excited I'm going to do this. Um, like, it's good. But it, it's, it'll be more sustainable if you kind of figure, just think about who you are. So, like, one of the things I was thinking about uh, is, yeah, you might have a room and that's great. And, like, if you're oriented that way, but some of you might, or some of the people that are listening, watching, you might be a person that's sort of like, I'm just, not, I don't know, I, I have a hard time sitting still. I don't, I don't really do that very well. I, I, that doesn't excite me. You can, but think about who you are. So maybe you have a dog and you walk your dog every morning. Like I, our neighbor has a dog and at six o'clock, uh, he didn't know the Lord at all, but you know, at six o'clock in the morning, he's out walking his dog every single day. You can, you know, so you could walk your dog and that could, you could take a, like a prayer walk with your dog. Your dog won't interrupt you too much. <laughs> you know, you, could, you can go for a walk. You, if some, others of you just think creatively, like, wow, you know, like, maybe, you're, maybe you've got a job that is super, like, you just, you, man, I'm on the road by 7 o'clock. i got to head out the door to the office at 7. Perfect. You've climbed into your car. Maybe don't listen to the radio. Maybe use that, use your commute as your time of prayer. What I'm saying is think about who you are Think about your rhythms and then be creative about, cre- about, about a time and then just sort of begin and, and start small and, and, and do that. If you've never ever, um, if you're just starting out and you're sort of like, I don't, even know, I don't even know what to say. Absolutely what I would start with is the Lord's Prayer. And, the, uh, and you, can, you can find that uh, in the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus was talking about that in Matthew 7. Um, and... 
so you can, you can, I would start with the Lord's Prayer because he gave it as a template. Because what happened was, is that the, many of you know this, but, you know, Jesus is, is with the disciples. The disciples come to him and say, hey, Jesus, you've got something pretty intense going in the whole area of prayer. Uh, how, do you, how, do we, how do we enter into that stuff? How do we do that? And what he did is he, the first thing that he did is he gave them a template. He gave them the Lord's Prayer. And uh, for like millennia, for like literally for over 2,000 years, the church, believers across the entire earth, have used that prayer to, to, as being catalytic in their own prayer life. So you can, you can just say it. If, you want, if you're starting out, just say the Lord's Prayer. You could start like this. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer every day. I'm just going to do that. And you do that, and then what you can also do is you can branch out from there. You can sort of begin to sort of, in, you know, just talk to God about some of, those, some of those themes that are in that. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, the Lord's Prayer is just obviously a great, a great starting point because that's literally a, this is what you do to pray. I think that's so good. We have our last question here, um, which is more of a, just to share a moment maybe where you felt God speak something to you, speak wisdom um, and how that either affected you, maybe changed your life, maybe affected somebody else, where you just got a word for somebody, whatever that might be, and just share maybe a story of that. Yeah, I would, I would say that for me, um, and it's, I think it's, this kind of thing is a little bit different for, for different people, but I think this is actually fairly consistent. Um, I'm amazed, I'm, I'm literally amazed at how many times I will have my, my daily readings, like in, in the scriptures, and it's like this, I, I'm not joking, it's like the scriptures are prophesying to me about my day. There's something in my day that's coming that the Lord knows, and he, when I'm reading it, he's highlighting things to me. And so, like I, uh, those of you that have ever, you know, been around in the, in, our, in the prayer room, I often will use the, you know, refer to the divine highlighter, where like they'll, you're reading a psalm, and or a passage or something from the Gospels, and just look for that phrase or that verse that stands out. And over and over and over again, I, I have, and a lot of times what happened was is that at the end of the day, I look back and I'm like, oh, that verse stood out to me, and that's because the Lord knew that this was going to happen. And, and so I just, I feel like that's a way that, that the, the Lord will speak daily words of wisdom and like almost, again, it's sort of like, oh, I know something's going to happen. Uh, you know, like, you know, maybe hey, don't get too worried about it, but just like, just be aware of, and I just, I find that so often that what I've read, which again, it's, it's literally a prepared, scheduled uh, reading that I'm, that I'm doing. And yet through that, because the word is living and active, right? And so because the Word is living and active and the Holy Spirit highlights a phrase because He knows what's coming in my day, uh, I just have learned to pay attention to that. So uh, it's not a specific story, but it's an example that I think, that I, I really believe that all of us can relate to right. uh, and can dig into. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, let's just give it up for Jim right now with your horns, with your claps. So good. Um, so what if we wanted to join and be a part of House of Prayer? Maybe we're praying. We want to join you in prayer. What does that look like? How can we get involved um, to yeah. pray with you guys? Yeah, well, the, the, the super great thing is that um, right now it's, it's as easy as it's ever been because, we're, because for the last year we've been primarily using Zoom for our prayer meetings uh, for obvious reasons we're all aware of. And, but we also are, are back to we've been meeting in person on Mondays and w Mondays and Wednesdays, but every day from 10 in the morning until noon, so 10 in the morning until noon, Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we are on Zoom from 10 till noon. People can drop, you can drop in at any time. You can join at, at 11.15 in the morning or whatever. You can just tune in. You can do it from work, wherever, uh, and want it. But if you're also, if you're, for those that are interested in, in, in the in-person in in uh, gathering, we are in the sanctuary here, uh, on Mondays and on Wednesdays. It's simultaneously, we, on Mondays and Wednesdays, we do the Zoom and the in-person thing. Uh, you can find out the specific, like the link for Zoom is on our website. So if you just Google search House of Prayer Edmonton, you'll automatically, you'll, it'll just bring up our website. Perfect. And then you can find out the Zoom link and uh, you already know where we, where we meet. So. Yeah. 
Awesome. You're all welcome. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much, Jim, for joining us today. Let's give it up for Jim one more time. Uh, thank you.